purpose of this mini lecture is to start talking a little bit about stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is one of those really nice big words, makes you sound really intelligent, especially if you know how to do stoichiometry. But it's all about calculating the quantities of substances in chemical reactions. Uh, I like to use examples in cooking all the time. And uh, in cooking, you can use a recipe to find out uh, what the relative amounts of your ingredients are that go into a recipe and it can also tell you how much you're going to produce. For instance, when you make chocolate chip cookies, the recipe calls for two eggs. And if you're going to make a, the batch of cookies with two eggs, you're going to need one bag of chocolate chips. And the recipe might tell you you're going to make 36 cookies out of it. It relates the quantities. Well, in chemistry, uh, our recipe that we use is our balanced equation. So here's an example of a, of a recipe in chemistry. This one isn't balanced yet, um, but we have a recipe here that says if you take C3H8, which is propane, and you react it with some oxygen, you'll produce carbon dioxide gas and uh, water vapor. And once it's balanced, we can put our coefficients in there, and I'm assuming you already know how to balance equations. If you don't, uh, go back and learn how to balance equations. Uh, but in this case, uh, we can interpret this uh, recipe in lots of different ways. You'll notice one thing is that we have coefficients for the oxygen and the carbon dioxide, the CO2, and for the water. We didn't bother the right one for the propane, the C3H8. Um, if we don't bother the right coefficient, we assume that to be a 1. Now, when we go to interpret this information, we could interpret this as one molecule of propane reacts with five molecules of oxygen. You know, those are our ingredients in our recipe. Now, we don't always react just with one molecule of propane. Matter of fact, most of the time we don't because there's so many molecules in any sample of matter. Um, but what if we had two molecules of propane? Well, you could pretty quickly see that we're, if we double the number of molecules of propane, we're going to double the molecules of O2 that we need. Uh, similarly, if we took 12 molecules of propane, well, we're starting to see that our recipe says, well, you're going to need five molecules of oxygen for every one molecule of propane. So you're going to need five times as many, and you could probably even do that in your head and come up with that you're going to need 60 molecules of oxygen. Well, this would still be a very tiny, tiny uh, amount of, of propane and oxygen here. And at some point, we start grouping these molecules into larger groups. Well, Right now, with numbers of 12 and 60, we could easily group those into groups of dozens. And we could find that, in this case, it's we would have one dozen uh, molecules of propane, and we would have five dozen molecules of oxygen. And we see that even if we group these into larger groups, in groups of 12, the ratio of the groups is still going to be one for the propane and five for the oxygen. And in chemistry, you know, we use a lot of, you know, we use much larger groups here. And we go ahead and we group those into moles, and the ratio is still going to be the same. And this is the important uh, ratio that we're looking for. When we look at a, a recipe, our balanced equation, the way we, we usually interpret it is in terms of moles. And we, so we say that those coefficients represent the number of moles. So in our recipe here, we'd say one mole of propane is going to react with five moles of oxygen. And we could go ahead and we could also say we're producing three moles of CO2 and four moles of water vapor. And that would be all if we followed the recipe with those exact amounts. Well, the reality is we don't always make exactly the right amount of a recipe or, or the original intended uh, amounts in the recipe. We could use all sorts of different amounts and we need to learn how to calculate those amounts. So, for instance, um, an example would be if the question was, if when 0.74 moles of oxygen reacts, how many moles of water will be produced? And so we look at it and say, okay, this is a problem where we're given the amount of moles of one substance in our balance equation and asked to calculate the moles of another substance in our balance equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of good dimensional analysis here. We're going to begin with the end in mind. The question is asking how many moles of water. So we're going to put that over on the right-hand side because that's, those are the, going to be the right units for our answer. And over on the left-hand side, we'll start out with uh, the number that we're given, in this case, the 0.74 moles of O2. 
Well, when we're given moles of one substance and asked for moles of the other, uh, we're just going to do uh, a one-step conversion here with our conversion factor being the mole ratio that we get from our balanced equation. And so we set up our dimensional analysis. We know we've got a one-step conversion, so I'm going to draw my horizontal line there and put my multiplication sign. And when we multiply out our, our, our math here, we want those units of moles of O2 to go away. We don't want them in our answer. And we know in order to get them to go away, we just need to get them to cancel out. So we're going to put our, our units of moles of O2 down in the denominator. And in our conversion factor, we know we're, we want to relate that to moles of H2O. So we'll put those on top. And where we relate those amounts of moles is this is where we use our coefficients from our balanced equation. So we go ahead and say, well, the coefficient for water is 4. So we're going to we're interpret that in our, in our recipe up there that, that it's going to produce 4 moles of water for every 5 moles of O2 that react. That's our mole ratio. It's a 4 to 5 ratio here. And so now we know that we can multiply the 0 0.74 times 4 and divide it by 5. And when we do that, we get an answer of zero that rounds to 0 0.59 moles of, of water. And notice that we've canceled out our units of moles of O2. And the only units that we have left in our original equation there are the moles of H2O, which are the moles, which are the units that we're looking for in our final answer.